This is The Roadmap with Ted Jenkins. Hey everybody, welcome to The Roadmap exclusively here on ASBN.com. I'm Ted Jenkins, and every week we bring you some of the brightest and best CEOs and business owners, entrepreneurs, leaders all around the country who are trying to climb the ladder, scale their business, and maybe, just maybe, exit stage left one day. But I'm excited today because a lot of people want to know about the nonprofit business and how does that work. I've got one of the top leaders here in Atlanta, Dr. Kevin James, the president of Morris Brown University. I went down there and I have to tell you, I had the most amazing experience visiting uh, you at the school and yes. just learning about the comeback around this school. Yes. Uh, so I just want to know about your journey. Like, sure. how, did, how did you actually get to this position to be running the school? How did that actually come about? Why did you want to do it? Yes. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on your show. You know, about four years ago, I was literally sitting at home. It was about six o'clock at night. And I was watching the news where my, and I saw on the news where my predecessor retired resigned. And I thought for a second, you know, I've known Morris Brown College. Right. Uh, I've known the struggles over the years. And I literally out loud said, wow. I want to be the president of Morris Brown. Now, this is after hours, 6 p.m. at night. I pick up the phone, and I call the 6th District of the AME Church. Morris Brown College is an AME Church right. institution. And the way that God set it up was the chairman of the board's assistant answered the phone. After <laughs> hours, I was shocked. And uh, I said, listen, you don't know me. My name is Kevin James. I want to be the next president of Morris Brown College. I just saw where your president retired, resigned. And we talked on the phone for 45 minutes. And at the end of that conversation, she said, send me your resume and put it directly in the chairman's hands. <laughs> a month later, I got an interview. Three interviews later, here I am, the president of Morris Brown. I've been the president since March 1, 2019. Yeah, and it's been amazing, the story of what you've done at yes. the college. But yes. Atlanta is a very uh, dense area when it comes to HBCUs. I and mean, yes. some of the biggest in the country, you know, with Spelman and yes. Morehouse. And in 2002, yes. Morris Brown lost its accreditation. And a lot yes. of people don't really know what that means. And I want to yes. know if you could tell people what it means and then like, how did you get it back? Because yeah. that could put a school out of business. No? Yes, absolutely. Um, the lifeblood of any higher education institution is in, that is quality and is accredited. Morris Brown College lost its accreditation in 2002 due to some financial mismanagement. Right, you can't take right. federal monies and use it for bills or anything <laughs> like that. And, you know, HBCUs are underfunded. And so the president at the time was trying to make ends meet, but you can't do that. And so the institution lost its accreditation. Accreditation is synonymous with the word quality. And you have all of these different standards by the U.S. Department of Education that are indicators of that quality. Right. Uh, financial aid, fiscal management, fiscal stability, education, outcomes, academic rigor, faculty, staff, facilities, so many different areas that you have to show, show that you, you know, have every all's I's dotted and T's crossed. Right. And so the institution lost its accreditation. That literally was a death sentence for Morris Brown College. We literally went from 3,000 students to 50 students 50. overnight. Because, you know, students right. lost access to federal financial aid. And most folks can't go to college without some kind of student aid or student loans or scholarships, so right. on and so forth. And so people started transferring out. And uh, it literally should have been the death of Morris Brown. But the little engine that could, it kept <laughs> on going. And it kept going for 20 years. And so we just made history last year as the first HBCU to get us accreditation back after a 20 year <laughs> hiatus. People told me I was crazy for even wanting the position, for even trying to come in, because I'll never forget when I got my first interview, I called my mentor, who's one of the top researchers of right. HBCUs in the country. And I said, you'll never believe this. I got an interview to be the president of Morris <laughs> Brown. What do you think? And she paused for a second. She said, Morris Brown in Atlanta? <laughs> Why do you want said, to do that? Yeah. And I said, yeah. And she said to me, she said, Kevin, you know, that's never been done before, right? And I said, what's never been done? She said, no HBCU that lost its accreditation, been closed for 20 years, has ever come back. Are you ser serious about this? And I said, yes, I am. And so we made history. I have a phenomenal team, um, new leadership, new management, and we are absolutely moving to school. You ahead. know, there, there are a lot of people that are watching, and I always hear this commentary about nonprofits is it is it really a nonprofit yes is it for profit is yes. it a business or not a business but I want yes. you to just talk to people in general because starting a nonprofit is not easy yes H how do you get funding you know how do you try to manage it like a business because yes. it really in some ways 
some of these universities and colleges, they're, they're big businesses. All of them are businesses, even the nonprofit institutions. Morris Brown is a nonprofit. And it's interesting you say that because my first day on the job, uh, I went in, I said, okay, how do I turn this bankrupt business <laughs> right. into a very profitable business? And one of the first things that I did was I was walking literally around my campus and I was talking out loud to God. I said, God, help me. How am I going to turn this school around? And I heard something speak to me and say, use what you got. Now, Morris Brown is in downtown Atlanta. Right. Directly across the street from the Mercedes-Benz Mercedes -Benz, Stadium. Yeah. And so our top academic program back in the day was hospitality management. And so I said, wow, I know what I'm going to do. We're going to create business here at Morris Brown College and build a hotel. I called my chairman. He said, Kevin, that's a great <laughs> idea, but we filed $35 million bankruptcy. How in the world are we going to do that? Nevertheless, to make a long story short, we've partnered with Hilton Hotel and we're gonna be building a $40 million hotel on the campus of Morris Brown College, where guess what, I don't have to beg for money anymore. <laughs> we're gonna create our own sustainable revenue model. And so um, this hotel, is gonna, we're gonna break ground in 30 days, and so in 18 months we'll have it. And this will be, a, this will be a, a working hotel, right? And will it not make, yes. Morris Brown College will be the premier uh, hospitality and management pro program in the country. At, that is the goal. And we'll be the only HBCU with a four-star flagged major branded hotel on our campus. On the rooftop, it'll be a restaurant overlooking the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, <laughs> the Atlanta <laughs> University Center. And so we're going to have a very, very profitable hotel on our campus. And here's another kicker. The bottom floor of the hotel will be a school of hospitality for our students so they get hands-on learning every day and, and get four years of hands-on learning experience. And once they go out uh, at the graduation, they have all the experience that they need to be very, very great leaders in hospitality management. And I remember you telling me, you know, this, it's amazing what's happening here. And I mean, it's not only gonna transform the college, but it will transform our city as well Absolutely. Uh, here in Atlanta and the lives of many, many students that come to the school. But Absolutely. You mentioned to me when we talked about, you know, because college has gotten out of control. I mean, yes. the cost at some of these schools I know are between room, board, fees, tuition, yes. seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year. And yes. you are on a mission to try to make school free. Absolutely. Uh, how are you doing that? Because yes. I think that is it's more than a noble mission. I mean, that's that's mm -hmm. what you know, so many countries, school doesn't cost a lot of money or it is free. Yes. In here, Students now are way behind the eight ball because they got to yes. pay all this debt when they get out of college. So as we were going through the accreditation process and, uh, you know, again, I mentioned that no school has ever come out of bankruptcy. Right. And so with us making it to the other side, I, I mentioned to my board, I said, look, we're debt free now. We made it through. And so that means we can charge any tuition that we want. Right. And so it was my goal that we had the lowest tuition of any HBCU in the city of Atlanta, one of the lowest in the state of Georgia. And so, like you mentioned, seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year to go to some of these schools. Morris Brown is That's eight thousand a year. Eight thousand dollars. Eighty five hundred dollars right. a year, forty two fifty a semester for our tuition. And the premise behind that is that a lot of that could be covered by Pell. If you're a Pell eligible student, a lot of that right. could be covered. You know, and if you have to take out a loan of you know, one or $2,000, again, right. you're coming out of school with little to no debt. And so that was the general gist of it. We want to push this model nationwide where institutions are not charging all of this money because you come out 10 steps behind with all of this loan debt. I mean, it's a major national conversation right now uh, in our government regarding And you said that the kids that end up going through the hospitality and management program, they have a, <clears throat> a guaranteed job with Hilton. That's how it works when they yes, come out? that is the goal. And so the Hilton Hotel brand is gonna be working directly with our students. And our premise is jobs as soon as you walk out the door. So I, I wanna pivot here and, and ask you, you know, because when you really got the school going the last several years, one of the things I saw while I was there is that you put in an esports yeah. program, and yes. uh, I don't think people fully realize in the world of sports just yes. how big esports. But you know, like making a business decision because you do have to make them even in a nonprofit organization. Yes. Why did you choose esports first and go at that route? Because the room that I saw was just it was amazing. Yes, it was a business decision. It was a niche. You know, I was. As we were going through accreditation, I said, okay, how are we going to market this school and brand this school to where we are different from everyone else? And so I, I looked, I said, wow, no one has the nonprofit uh, certificates. Nobody has the hospitality certificates. Right. But also, 
I kept hearing this esports, esports, esports. I kept hearing <laughs> it. And so I did some research and found there's only about 10 schools in the country that have degrees in esports. No HBCUs at that time had them. And so I said, wow, we're going to be the first HBCU with a degree in esports as well as a certificate. Um, and we went through the process. You know, people were asking me, like, what in the world is it? It's a like multi billion dollar it really industry. Is. And these students love gaming. <laughs> And so our premise was, look, you love gaming, you do it all day, every day, but here, let us teach you the business of gaming, streaming, uh, networking, all of this kind of thing. And so now it is one of our fastest growing programs, and we have the degree in esports and global business. You know, um, competing for students, I mean, it's really hard today. Students do have a lot of choices, even here in the state of Georgia and across yes. the country. And there are a lot of HBCUs around the country. Like I mentioned, Atlanta is very dense, but yes. you really do compete for students here against some of the other major HBCUs. So when you think about it as a business, absolutely. How do you try to differentiate and set yourself apart? Yes. Do you actually get involved sometimes in recruiting students and, Absolutely. and get them to come to the school? I'm on the front lines. You know, our premise was tuition. So we're the most affordable uh, HBCU tuition-wise in Atlanta. Right, I love that. New degree programs that no one else offers, right? Small classes. The fact that we have a hard reset going on. It's my little mantra that we have. <laughs> all new faculty, all new leadership you know, small classes like I just mentioned, and the premise that Morris Brown, I always say is the heartbeat of the Atlanta University Center. Right. We're bringing back all of the cultural norms of this historical black college. You know, folks have seen the movie Drumline. Yes. That movie was filmed on our campus. It was? We, yes, we are the school. <laughs> People say, Morris Brown. And I say, have you ever seen the movie Drumline? I say, that's a real school, that's us. And they're like, oh my God, it's my favorite movie. <laughs> well. The premise of music programs, the band, we're bringing all of that back, fraternities, sororities. And so we're going to be very, very competitive going back to the heart of who we are. You know, also th something that makes us very different is the fact that we are an institution of access. You know, since 1881, we've always been about access, that student who might need a second chance, a second push. And so with us being the most affordable and being the institution of access, we anticipate quick growth. Right. You know, I always say like uh, leadership is, is a difficult job yes. uh, and the labor market is really tight today. So yes. on the other side of it, you know, because a lot of businesses have to find high quality employees. Yes. How do you recruit people for administration, yes. professors, and, and get them to want to come? Do yes. you talk to them about the vision and where you're headed? How do you yes. recruit them to get to come to the school? You know, folks love a comeback story. Yes, they do. Yes, they they do. do. I love the comeback story. And, and I'm going to tell you, I have thousands of resumes in my inbox right now at this very moment of folks wanting to be a part of this hard to reset. You know, when I first came on, no one really wanted to talk to me because they didn't think that it was possible. And through, through marketing and social media and getting people to believe again, folks want to be a part of this hard reset because they want to be a, a part of something that's worthy. This is historical yeah. work. 100 years from now, folks will say, wow, I remember back in 2022 <laughs> right. when the school got its accreditation back? You know, people want to be a part of that. Not to mention the student body that we're catering to, that second chance student, that student who might need that extra push, that student who, you know, has these dreams and goals and desires of doing great things. People want to be a part of it. And so, you know, we post the positions and folks apply. You know, uh, in your kind of leadership position, there there's only a finite amount of time that you have in a week. And I know that you can get pulled in a hundred different directions <laughs> yes. in the community. People that may want to hear you speak or you've got to go to charitable events or other things like that. Yes. How do you try to manage your time and thinking about what to choose to do? And also yes. maybe, you know, for business owners, what to fail at? Because yes. we have to fail at things too. One of my mentors taught me something that I carry with me. Always try to find a way to say yes. And I know, so I like if that. I can spread myself, I try to, uh, I love my iPhone and I love my calendar and I'm, it's, <laughs> it's on my hip at all times. But, you know, I try to go to those things that at the end of the day will impact our students, you know, impact the business of Morris Brown, impact our philanthropic goals and endeavors. Right. Um, you know, I love to build relationships where our students can get jobs, you know, uh, graduate school. So just kind of just prioritizing where I need to be. Uh, and at the end of the day, putting Morris Brown College first. So, you know, I, now that I've gotten to know you better over the last seven or eight months, uh, I, I want to know, and I think the viewers will want to know, yeah. I think you're the sharpest dresser that I've ever met. <laughs> oh, I know man. people talk about it all the time, but I've seen it <laughs> from casual all the way to business. Yes. How do you choose your clothes? Oh, how you, man. How do you find them? How do you choose them? 
I don't know, man. I, I, something <laughs> pop out at me, and I may just say, "Hey, I like that. That might, you know, let me try to put put something together." I, I don't know, man. I just buy what I like. I'm gonna tell you what. <laughs> you gotta hang out with Dr. James if you want to know how to get dressed up in here. I wanted to thank you for coming on the program today, you. Uh, people. You gotta check out Morris Brown. A college. I always say right now it's got style and it's got substance. And if you took a tour or you went down to that university and you saw what's happening in our city, uh, you're going to be blown away about A, how to run a nonprofit, B, how to have a comeback story, but you're going to see some of the greatest things that are happening here in the city of Atlanta. So thanks for, so much for coming on the program today. Yes, and uh, that's this week's show of The Roadmap exclusively here on ASBN.com. Thanks for watching The Roadmap with Ted Jenkins. This has been a JBF Business Media production.